Please be seated. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. I definitely uh, think uh, mothers are the unsung heroes in our world today. And someone that we should definitely be celebrating. Um, we're going to have our scripture reading in Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 7. So if you want to look along with Ian, he'll be reading that for us this morning. Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 7. And you shall love the Lord your, your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words, which I am commanding you today, shall be on your heart, and you shall repeat them diligently to your sons and speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road, when you lie down and when you get up. We are uh, celebrating Mother's Day. Um, so hopefully you remember to call your mom this morning or to give her a gift just to show you appreciate her. Um, in our sermon series, we're um, looking at revive us again. And sometimes we need to remi be reminded of things, don't we? Sometimes we need a wake up call. And so um, I definitely think mothers deserve to be celebrated more than one day a week, I mean one day a year. Maybe they would like one day a week. Um, but as we think about mothers, um, my wife and I were talking about what would be an appropriate lesson for today. And as we're doing kind of a focus on some of the hymnal songs we sing, uh, she thought of Tell Me the Story of Jesus. And the mothers are the first in line to do that, aren't they? So many times we... Um, can look back and remember the first we heard about Jesus, the first we heard about God was from our mothers as they were telling us Bible stories or reading the scriptures to us. And as our scripture reading in Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 7, that's one that's always been one of my wife's favorite. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And in these words shall be on your heart teach them diligently to your children Amen. talk about them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way when you lie down and when you rise up when we truly think about the stories of jesus it should be something that's constantly on our mind it should be something that we are ready to share because it's the story that makes all the difference in the world today. It's the stories that we accept as truth and we respond to that result in our salvation and our eternity in heaven. This story was actually written by Fanny Crosby. She wrote a whole lot of the songs in our hymnal books. Um, some of you may not know that she lost her sight as a toddler. And as she's writing these stories and, and these uh, thoughts, they are truly coming from someone who is just seeing God and the power of God in her mind. Sometimes we like to complain, don't we? Sometimes we just want to stomp our feet and say, life's not fair. But picture her losing her sight as a toddler. And in this story, in this hymn she writes, it's all about, let me see the wonder of God. Let me think on how incredible God is. She's considered one of the most prolific hymn writers of all time. But instead of just focusing on her misfortune, she saw the beauty of Christ, which she expresses in her writings. As mothers, our kids need to hear about God, don't they? They desperately need to hear the message, the story of Jesus. So don't ever 
let the world define who you are when it contradicts with what God says. You see, our culture devalues motherhood in a big way. So many times they'll say, so what do you do for a living? And you say, oh, I'm, I live, I'm a mother. I raise my kids at home. And they're just like, oh, so you don't work. That doesn't come across very well. In 1963, there was this book by Betty Friedman called The Feminine Mystique. And she claims that women are trapped in an unwanted domestic life. And I thought, you know, you must not have met my daughter because she was desperate to be a mom from five years old on. In her book, she goes on to say that most women don't want to be stay-at-home moms. They're forced to be. Three years later, she went on to establish this national organization for women that's this radical organization to promote feminism. And throughout their esteem, they encourage mothers not to stay at home, but to go out and you have just as much right to, and it just goes on to espouse how kids don't need their moms. They just need somebody. That's not the way I see it. How about you? I think mothers are desperately needed. Mothers that are godly women Amen. that share the stories of Christ with their kids. Um, a couple of years ago, one of my grandkids sat me down. And you know how they need to kind of delve their wisdom to you sometimes. So my grandson was sitting here talking to me. And he went on to describe to me God's band-aid. And how he had a scab on his arm, but God had given him a band-aid that was that scab. And he went on to describe what that was. And it just put a smile on my face because I remember my wife having that exact conversation with his mother when she was four or five years old. And it just passed down um, that concept of God healing us. There's a lady named Peg Campolo. Her husband was a college professor and is a Christian author, Tony Campolo. But she would oftentimes go to these um, uh, faculty parties at the college. And she's at this faculty party and they would come around and just socialize. And one of the people would always come and say, so what do you do? As they were talking about the college classes they teach and all this. And she said, I'm not ashamed of what I do. And so she just, when asked what she did, she never says, I'm just a housewife. But she kind of sat down one day and wrote out what her response would be. She said, I'm a, I am socializing two homo sapiens and the dominant values of the Judeo-Christian tradition in order that they may be instruments for the transformation of the social order of the teleological prescribed utopia inherent in the echelon. In layman terms, she said, I'm a mother of two. But she was ready with an answer because mothers do a lot, but they're undervalued. And especially mothers who are teaching the words of God. They are undervalued and underappreciated, even by the people who are hearing it. We need to cherish the opportunity to share God to everyone, but especially to our kids. You see, Though the world might devalue, our culture might devalue motherhood, the Bible values motherhood, very much so. If you want to turn to Proverbs 31, I'm going to look quickly at verses 10 through 31. But I want you to catch something here that I had not noticed necessarily. <coughs> this is not written as the standard for mothers. In a lot of ways, this is written as a standard for husbands and children to affirm and praise mothers. 
So look at it kind of from that standpoint as we go through this. Starting in verse 11, I'm starting in verse 10. An excellent wife, who can find? She's far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he'll have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She's like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it's yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all of her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchants. <coughs> Strength and dignity are her clothing. She laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. <coughs> Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Does that sound like motherhood is held honorable by God? We get the opportunity to celebrate our mother. The Bible in so many cases shows the desperation of women to be mothers. In Genesis 31, Rachel said to Jacob, just give me children or I will die. But she felt her life was not worthwhile without her having the fulfillment she wanted by raising children. She recognized the honor and dignity of motherhood and that's what she wanted. Her fulfillment in life for her was connected to motherhood. There's nothing wrong with not being a mother. Some claim that it's inferior to have marriage and children because of 1 Corinthians 7 32. It says, I want you to be free from anxiety. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But instead, it's just saying some prefer that path, but many others prefer the chance to be mothers. Acts 9.36 talks about Tabitha or Dorcas. There was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, translated Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. If you choose motherhood, you're engaging in something that the Bible honors. But we also need to recognize that motherhood is a ministry. The first chance we have to raise someone up to know God is in the household. And our households need to be filled with Christian teaching. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're in bad shape if you just wait for your kids to hear about God from me or from someone at church. Yes, they should be hearing about it at church, but it needs to be in our household. And I very firmly believe mothers are leading the way in that. God didn't just decide, oh, well, maybe they'll think about me every once in a while. He said from our passage in Deuteronomy, think about them all the time. Paul mentions a couple of great ministers in 2 Timothy 1 5. It says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure it dwells in you as well. You see, 
Timothy learn about God from his grandmother and his mother in the home. The greatest thing you'll ever do is tell the story of Jesus. As our hymn goes, tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. We teach and demonstrate the love of God. So I'm going to do a plug real quick. Uh, some of you know I'm a co-director for Faith Builders. And we have a children's program that we're really excited about this year. And we've been advertising for a month. And I checked on the board and we have zero volunteers from this congregation. And all we ask is that you take a two hour block of time to teach so that it allows the parents to be able to participate in the Faith Builders programs and the lessons. So if you go into the foyer and turn right, we've got a bulletin board on the right immediately after the sound room that has all of the information about Faith Builders. But please, if you are interested, July 6th, 7th, and 8th, just sign up for that one two hour block of time. And I think next or a week or a week and a half, You'll be given the curriculum to have months to prepare just that two hour block. And there'll be a couple of different people, but it's another opportunity to teach God's word. Okay, my advertisement's over. Um, we recognize that motherhood is a ministry, but it's part of God's plan. God wants mothers and fathers to be talking to their children about God no matter the age of their children. He wants mothers and fathers to be praying for their children, no matter the age of their children. I don't know if you realize this, but God didn't just make men, he made women. Creation was incomplete without women. Titus 2, 3 through 5 talks about kind of the role of women Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They're to teach what is good, training the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. God's plan is for women to honor him by the way they live. Amen. goes on to say God's purpose is older women teach younger women if you've already raised your children your ministry is not over you have years of valuable insight and wisdom to share with others you're to love your husbands and children to be sensible notice it so that the word of God will not be dishonored Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Is that what you are doing with your life? Are you telling everyone the story of Jesus? When I spent years teaching teenagers, one thing that I oftentimes had kind of them share with me is how difficult it was to live a Christian life if your parents weren't doing the same. We are a light to our families and we need to be a light that's shining for God. We are being watched to see if our faith is genuine and sincere and we need to be shining that example because it matters who's watching you. In Isaiah 66, 13, I wanted to close with, you know, oftentimes in scripture, God is referenced as a father. And God is referenced as how a father reacts to his children. But you know, here in this passage in Isaiah, it references God in the character of a mother. It says, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted. 
Notice the role of a mother, the prophet Isaiah says. She comforts those she's around. One of the ways we comfort people is we tell how much Jesus loves them. How much he sacrificed because of his sincere love. We have so many opportunities to show the love of God. One way I think we have that we don't take advantage of enough is showing appreciation. Whether it be for what someone has done or even to our mothers. So I want to encourage you today to think about how you can show appreciation to someone who has told you about God. Whether it be your mother, whether it be a friend, but let people know you appreciate that they shared the words and stories of Jesus. Because that's a story that we need to all be sharing more often. Our world is trying to redefine the family. And that can be scary. Yes. But don't let them redefine motherhood to the point that we forget that motherhood is sharing the words of God, is sharing his teachings with our children. Motherhood is truly honorable, not something to be trivial or looked down on. It's one of the greatest things in life you can be, and it's a role that should never be taken for granted. You see, you've got a story to tell, and you've got a ministry to fulfill for the rest of your life. I'm closing each of these lessons on revival with Ephesians 5, 14, where it says, wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And I just want to encourage you, if you have not been living the life God would have you to do, we have the opportunity now to respond. If you need to put on Christ in baptism, we would love to give you that opportunity now. If you don't know what that means and you'd like to study, we would love to share that with you. But I do want to again encourage you to show your appreciation. Let people know they matter. But if you need to respond to the invitation in any way, please do so as we stand and have our invitation song. Tell me the story of Jesus. Tell me the story of Jesus.